Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up in this situation. Well, we got a new update. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and today we'll be discussing a very important update as well as what's in store for Dying Light 2's future. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. <laughs> It's been a year since Dying Light 2's launch, and Techland has been improving the game update after update. And this one is a W. Come on, Pilgrim. One more score. One more big score. From yesterday's live stream, new trailers, and patch notes, we are learning more about Dying Light 2's future. The Good Night Good Luck update was released where your knights in Villador are about to get threatening and darker, with more roaming volatiles on the prowl for their next human stress ball. I'm not sure how they could get any scarier because taking on a volatile in this game isn't that tough to do at a higher level. In comparison to Dying Light 1, these volatiles are cute and harmless. And, uh, no. and I get scared by almost everything. What would be cool though is if they added a fast demolisher volatile hybrid, immune to UV, in a chase level 5. It would be like Mr. X from the Resident Evil 2 remake. He wasn't in the old Resident Evil 2, but you wouldn't expect a threat like him. The volatiles can also start chases and call their friends to give you their big bear hugs. The chase track has also changed to a better intense kind of track. The chases have also become unpredictable rather than arcade-like. The Bloody Knights event has also commenced from June 29th to July 13th, where we can loot valuables at night, avoid volatiles, get must-have rewards, and explore community maps with our pilgrim friends by accessing the in-game menu. We also get the Prick's outfit and Hakon's crossbow. I wonder how we got it. Techland has also improved parkour and provided two modes for it called physical and assisted mode. Physical mode is for the hardcore Dying Light veterans to keep our momentum and air control with more realistic parkour. The floatiness has been reduced so we won't accidentally Mario jump over a zombie. Assisted mode is for the newbies who need the assistance of flotatious gravity. Certain E3 elements have returned to the game, including the famous knife slide down the billboard. <laughs> After the Bloody Nights event, we're going to be having the Walking Dead and Dying Light 2 crossover event soon, where we'll be able to use Negan's Lucille Bat in the Walking Dead. The Hakon bundle and Walking Dead's Rick bundle are coming to the game. I wonder if we'll ever find Coral. I've only watched that show up to season 7. Techland also took weapon crafting further with new blueprints, specifically 70 of them, and we can craft and upgrade them to become a legendary tier. What else could we expect for Dying Light 2 in the future? Guns that were confirmed months ago will return to the game. We'll also receive new modifications for new weapon types in the game. There are new zombies to slaughter, and we'll have a fury mode for Aiden's infected skills. Techland did confirm that there won't be a PvP mode though. Now for the good part. Let's talk about the new narrative story focused DLC 2. We'll be able to play it next year due to the devs postponing it to spend more time on delivering the best story expansion possible. Bloody Ties did get delayed and not gonna lie, the DLC was kind of mid when it was released. The arena was cool though. <laughs> But I think we can have high hopes for this DLC too. According to Timon, the new DLC will nicely tie in some loose ends with new writers working on the project. The DLC will last about 10 plus hours and takes place after Aiden's arc ended in the main game. Aiden will be exploring new locations in a new map for this standalone DLC too. Techland could also be planning the return of some characters from the base game, seeing that they're being secretive about the details. We might see Lawan, Hakon, maybe Frank in the game, or Sophia again. We all love Kyle Crane from Dying Light 1, so who knows if he returns to the DLC too. Techland seems aware of how much we love this character, that there was even a Kyle Crane easter egg in Dying Light 2 if you remember. So imagine this possibility. You can do amazing stuff, almost like Kyle Crane. 
You will be able to play DLC 2 without playing the base game, and DLC 2 will be very focused on the infected with a diverse range of new armor, new weapons, and cosmetics for you pilgrims to fight them. There was another leak where Aiden loses his hand for unknown reasons, but it could be related to DLC 2, and I thought Ethan Winters was the only person losing hands and limbs. Apart from DLC 2, Techland is aiming to have crossplay in the game before DLC 2 releases. We already have cross-gen, but I recall how a lot of you wanted cross-play. We could also have more levels or different reputation ranks like we had in the following DLC. To summarize the patch notes in update version 1.11, patch 1.35, Techland made graphical improvements by playing around with color grading giving us a Haran sunset grading option or darker nights to reduce your visibility in your night in Villador. They wanted to enhance the nighttime aspect of their daytime and nighttime cycle. They also made sure that your encounters with the infected are more unpredictable in the night. They improved animations in the patch like vault animations, the ability to disable jump magnets, a weapon throwing animation skill because you're a yeet master, warding off volatiles with UV sticks, and faster attack animations. <laughs> Glitches were fixed for users in co-op by making sure the game doesn't crash, players won't be stuck in locations during quests, characters and enemies will spawn properly, the bodies of your victims will also burn nicely to a crisp marshmallow, and dismembered ligaments won't disappear right away, so you can get a long, good, close look at them. But that would be creepy. What do you think of the new Dying Light 2 update? And what do you hope to see in the narrative-based story DLC? Comment down below your thoughts, perhaps even theories on what you think will be in the DLC. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe and like the video for more content like this. Thank you for watching, and that's all.